Well, good morning. My name is Greg Belser, and this is our Advent 2022 Day 3 edition. We are working through uh, our Advent guide at Morrison Heights Church, and uh, I am participating uh, along with the congregation, and uh, I am adding a little uh, Facebook Live devotional every day. So that's what you stumbled upon if you, it's the first time you've seen these. So we're on day three of our guide. Those guides are available from the church office. If you'd like to contact us there, we'd be happy to make sure you get one. Uh, today's reading is authored by uh, Chesney Stevens. Chesney is a uh, a young mother in our church who we love dearly, thankful for her life and for her family. She's entitled this reading, The Zeal of the Lord of Hosts Will Do This. It's the reading of Isaiah 9, verses 1 to 7. So let me read that passage of scripture, then read Chesney's devotional. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Indeed, he will. This is Chesney's devotional. What do you hope for? When we try to answer this question, our thoughts scatter. At times we hope for frivolous things, nice weather or a great parking spot. Then there are days we hope for big life-changing things, relationships to be mended, a child to call our own, or the salvation of a parent. All of these hopes have one thing in common. When we hope, we hope for what is to come. We're looking beyond the present and to the future. We receive hope when we don't forget to remember. If we skip back just one verse before Isaiah 9 begins, we read, and they look to the earth, but behold, distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish. Isaiah 8, verse 22. The children of Israel were in despair. In utter darkness, no one has hope. But if we look forward while remembering the past promises of a redeemer, then we find hope in chapter nine. The light has shown, the darkness has fled, and hope has come. Sinners, those who walk in darkness, now have access to the grace of Christ. Oppression of man has been defeated. Raging wars and broken nations will cease and be united under the banner of Christ. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. Hope is alive. The promise of this child was their hope, and today he is ours. We live in a time when we've already seen this promise of a child fulfilled. We already have the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. We can hope because our hope lies with the Lord. He will fulfill every promise spoken. We trust in him. We trust that the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. He is the one who overtook the darkness and gave us light. In him, we find our hope. As we look to the future, while remembering the past promises of God, we still hope. We hope for the day of Christ's return. The one who has come is still coming. We can trust that the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. 
Amen. Thank you, Chesney, for those words. I uh, want to encourage you today on this Christmas season, as we look back, we remember, we receive, we, uh, if you will, in our own hearts, validate the work of God, not only 2,000 years ago in the coming of Christ, but every day of our own lives, we've seen the hand of God. And as we look forward, we know that the past uh, is an indicator, if you will, a precursor of what is to come. The Lord who promised to come came, and the Lord who promises to come again will come. But we wait in hope, and we wait and trust that the zeal of the Lord of hosts himself will do this, will accomplish this. So that's our comfort today. Christmas is a reminder that God has not forgotten us. Trust today, you remember that. May the Lord give you grace. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for a new day. We pray that as we go about our uh, responsibilities today, that we would see your hand, we would uh, remember your work, your promises, and uh, your faithfulness. And that, Lord, would give us hope for this week, for this next month, for the balance of our days. May we not lose hope that the God of God knows our name. He's numbered the hairs of our head and he will one day take us home. We shall be delivered from this body of sin and we shall one day, Father, be free totally, completely, finally. So Lord, we love you and we rejoice in you today. Thank you for the coming of Christ and for the soon return of the same. I pray God for your mercies for everyone today looking to Christ. It's in his name we pray, amen. Have a great day.